CNN's Jake Tapper seemed to barely hold his composure as he read the results of the Dominion Voting System's landmark defamation case against Fox News. Let's watch. Dominion's lawyer saying, quote, today represents a ringing endorsement for truth and for democracy. Fox trying to put a positive face on what can only be interpreted as one of the ugliest and most embarrassing moments in the history of journalism. Fox uh, issued a statement saying, quote, we are pleased to have reached a settlement of our dispute, dispute, with Dominion voting systems. We acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. The settlement reflects, I'm sorry, this is going to be difficult to say with a straight face. This settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. We are hopeful that our dis sorry. We are hopeful that our decision to resolve the dispute with Dominion amicably instead of the acrimony of a divisive trial allows the country to move forward from these issues. CNN's former anchor Brian Stelter weighed in on the case too. Here he is on News Nation's Dan Abrams live on Tuesday. I figured there would be a settlement because that's what happens in these cases. The lawyers for Dominion expertly tortured Fox in public, pushed them all the way up into a courtroom. The jury was seated, ready to go. That's exactly when you would expect a settlement. However, the dollar figure is jaw-dropping, even for Fox, which has $4 billion in the bank, which makes loads of profits thanks to Fox News. It is still amazing to see this company have to pay out more than three quarters of a billion dollars, even for Fox. That's a very big deal. I would think that hundreds of millions of more is still worth it to Fox rather than having to give an on-air retraction. And rather than having <laughs> Rupert Murdoch testify. That's for sure. Those are the two big yeah. pieces they don't have to worry about now. Rupert Murdoch, more you know, he's, he's, he's 92 or something years old, just broke up with a woman he was going to get married to. You're not having the best time of his life right now. Now he doesn't have to show up in Wilmington and talk about what went wrong at his network. Now he doesn't have to face that. And neither does Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity or any of the other stuff. Why did they Dan Abrams also took the opportunity to ask Stelter about getting the axe from the network. Here's what he said. I really, truly don't know. I, you know, I know I had a, a popular show by CNN standards, and I know that it was pretty cheap to produce. But I also know every show gets canceled eventually. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock yeah, on, yeah. Knock on yeah. table. Stelter said CNN appears to be trying to, quote, lower the temperature, and he hopes the network finds success. All right. Did you find um, Tapper's uh, barely suppressed glee here to be distasteful? Is he in a good position from his own network to be talking about journalistic integrity, et cetera? Look, I think uh, Jake Tapper is one of the better and fairer reporters in general. And I, I see you side-eyeing me, so maybe you don't agree. Yeah, but I don't have any problem with Jake Tapper. Um, uh, I, you know, he's actually, he's shared my work in the past when I, um, my you know, biggest story ever when I, I was like the first person to say the Covington kids were being had been totally wrongly portrayed by the media. I wrote an article. I tweeted it. He shared it immediately. One of the, the reasons it had so much penetration in like the mainstream, my perspective, was because he shared it. So I criticize him when I disagree with him and I, I applaud him when he does things I like. Um, you could say it was not the most professional moment, but let's all be honest. Like, no one is neutral. Everyone has a perspective. CNN hates Fox. Fox hates CNN. Turnabout is fair play. I've said this before. Everyone on Fox would make fun of CNN in a similar position. So I think it would be a, a bit rich if I expected Jake Tapper to keep his composure together there. Um, they're loving it, and that's fine. Now, I would say that... You know, if we go into journalism standards, um, CNN and other mainstream news agencies have promoted um, narratives that I think are very false and damaging. Not all of them. Not everything they say is false. I'm not making that claim. But they were totally bought in, MSNBC even more so, to Russiagate, to a just totally harmful, pernicious, wrong idea that, uh, that we got Trump because of the pernicious influence of Russian bad actors on social media that has empowered the media to demand greater and greater strangulation of discourse online. I think that is very bad and damaging. I think mainstream media played a prime role in it. I think they were suckers for, for fraudulent stories. Um, how many of them shrieked at us and yelled at us, uh, say, said we were racist for wondering about the lab leak mm -hmm. idea, saying that was a racist conspiracy theory? You know, that's been retracted. I'm sure plenty of them, you know, I, I'm 
not pointing fingers at specific people, but I'm sure you know plenty of mainstream people pointing to Russia immediately in the wake of Nord Stream, all that, all that kind of stuff. So let's you know so the Rachel Maddow supercut of saying if you get the vaccine, you won't get COVID. That that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, and then all the all yeah. the COVID stuff. So let's let's all be wary of our journalistic practices. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I thought that Brian Stelter made some really good points. I think he's absolutely right about. Um, trial being used as a uh, incentive to settle and that there oftentimes isn't a real expectation you're going to go uh, is how close can you get? It's kind of a game of chicken yeah. and that the settlement amount really is extraordinary. In an earlier segment, I compared it to the overall yearly earnings of Dominion voting systems, which are in the in kind of double digit millions, not in the triple digit millions. So the settlement was just under 800 million. Um, so it's a huge windfall for them. But it's also worth maybe comparing it to the last big Fox settlement over the sexual harassment scandal a few years ago, which was a $90 million settlement. And this is almost 10 times mm -hmm. that. So uh, Brian Stelter pointing out that Fox's uh, uh, balance sheet is huge, but even $4 billion, 750, uh, so seven, nearly $800 million is a pretty big chunk out of even a very um, well-performing company's bottom line. And so I know that some liberals are hand-reading saying, well, it wasn't anywhere close to the $1.6 I mean, that's a number that you ask for, not a number that you necessarily think you're mm -hmm. going to get. And this does seem to be something that was financially damaging to Fox and might have some effect on behavior to the extent that we agree that um, you know journalistic institutions shouldn't knowingly put people on the air that they know are going to tell lies about other people or other corporations um, and do so in order to uh, turn a profit. Right. And you know, even though Dominion had a lot of things going for them in this, in what what had come out of, of the previous court cases to decide if we should even get to a jury trial. They had a lot of momentum behind them. You know, again, the bar is really high to prove defamation for a good reason because we don't we don't want to prevent media companies um, from being able to report and potentially air in the course of reporting difficult stories. Other countries have have. It's much easier to prove liable and defamation in some of our peer countries, Australia being one of them, UK being another. And that has had the effect I, of, of silent. Actually, a lot of the early Me Too reporting wouldn't have been possible in those countries because you just can't say, say outrageous things about people without getting sued. So we, we, are, a, we are a free speech country, warts and all. And, uh, and I, as I've said, I worried about the risk of even slightly chinking away at that, even if maybe this was a case of some egregious wrongdoing. But we didn't get there, and they've paid out. And uh, $787.5 million so that Rupert Murdoch doesn't have to uh, go to trial, so he doesn't have to be deposed, um, so that they don't have to you know, root through his personal documents. I mean, that's a big chunk of money, but for someone like Rupert Murdoch, it really might be worth it. Mm, indeed. More rising right after this.